guys welcome once more to our youtube channel for those of you who are taking physics on thursday gc 2023 session we wish you all the best uh bu go rocket so let's have a quick look at northwest mark 2021 as part of your revision process okay let's go again guys you know what we do right you pause the video you read the question you try to analyze it you solve it yourself before you check out what i've done let's go so two similarities first between um gravitational and uh, electrostatic fields okay so both obey the inverse square law all right the magnetic field does not obey the inverse square law Let, let's just be clear on that uh both create conservative fields yes even the magnetic field is a conservative field okay so yeah the work done is independent of the path that you are taking all right good so uh both have zero potential at infinity correct okay at infinity the potential is zero even for the magnetic field um correct so those are the similarities there now let's look at differences we have gravitational force cannot be shielded while e force can be shielded that is correct okay uh the magnetic force you know you notice i'm talking about magnetism here too right because I, you never know what you will see on thursday in your gc 2023 so the magnetic force can be shielded okay Yes, it can be shielded just like the E the E force. It can be shielded too. Um, and then you have another difference. Gravitational potential values are negative and zero at infinity. Why electric potential values can be negative or positive and zero at infinity? Why is it negative or positive for el electric potential values? Because you can have a negative or positive generating charge. Okay, perfect. So what other difference for two unit masses? Each with a unit charge, the ratio Fe to Fg is approximately 10 to the 20. Why is this a difference? Hey, you're saying that the electrostatic force between two point charges, right, unit charges, is about 10 to the 20 times greater than the gravitational force between two unit masses. And this is a huge difference in, in strength of the electrostatic force relative to the gravitational force okay good so let's solve the part two the acceleration due to gravity on the moon's surface is one seat that on the earth's surface perfect simple pendulum of length l is taken from the earth's surface to the moon's surface what should be its length on the moon's surface such that the periodic time on the moon should be twice that on earth okay so we want periodic time on moon to be two times that on the earth okay so what but what is periodic time of a simple pendulum well it's two pi l on g so L on the moon divided by G on the moon to be equals to what? 4 pi. Why are we having 4 pi here? Because this 2 has multiplied with the 2 pi that was normally supposed to be here. Okay. So you're now 4 pi. Square root of what? L on the earth divided by G on the earth. Perfect. So we can uh, simplify, square both sides. This 2 pi goes to this with some 2 pi here. So I'm left with 2. So if I square both sides, I'm just simply going to be left with what? L M over G M to be equals to. 2 squared gives us 4, so 4 Le over Ge, okay? So what is our Lm? Lm is 4L, right? Because the length on the Earth's surface is L, remember that? So that's L, so you are taking it now to the moon. So uh, we have 4L there, Gm over Ge. But remember that um, Gm over Ge basically gives you 1 over 6, right? Yes, because the field intensity of the surface of the moon is one seat that on the Earth's surface. So this is basically one over six. So divided by four L, you have two over three L. So that's the length of the simple pendulum on the moon's surface, such that the periodic time is two times that on the Earth. All right, easy peasy, that one squeezy. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. So let's move on to the next problem. Mm -hmm. 